Hey, what's up? This is Odulena from Odulena Digital. Welcome to this channel and be sure to subscribe if you're new here. Welcome back to all of you who already subscribed. Welcome to the new 50 subscribers who came in last week. Please explore the rest of the videos on this channel. This channel is about personal development, about business, marketing, online marketing. I work for Google as a Google Ads specialist, but everything that I share here is my personal view of things and my personal opinion. So having said that, the topic of the day is actually something that one of you asked me to publish. This is from Kishan Shah. So Kishan, thank you so much for your idea from my last video. You asked me to actually tell more about my reading habits, how I do I end up reading so much. So when, how I read, what I read and when I read. Okay, today's video I'm gonna talk about some of my reading habits and how I ended up reading so many books. First of all, I want to disappoint you. I don't read as much as it looks like. There is a new video every time and here I have tons of books. This is just part of the collection that we have, me and my boyfriend in our apartment in London. However, I haven't read every single one of them and I read relatively small amount compared to what some personal gurus and influencers are saying. I think a few years back uh, when Ty Lopez started with his I read a book a day TED talk, if you haven't seen it, you can check it out. It was very inspiring for me and I was like, wow, book a day, that's so crazy. And then I saw that like all these stats that the CEOs are reading a book every week. And I was like, I have to do this as well. However, from my personal experience, no matter what I target, I put for myself, I never end up reading more than 26 books. Even if I try very hard, 26 books per year. If I, if I slow down or if I go faster, it's always around 26, 25 books per year. So half of the average CEO. So I'm never gonna be a CEO, oh my God. <laughs> Actually, that's not even true. I read all around the internet and there's no such statistics it's just individuals claiming that they are reading 50 books like for example warren buffett and uh, bill gates they're some of the people who said that they read about 50 books not 52 and a lot of other people kind of misuse this information to sell more of their products but that's another topic I think that the average CEO does not read 52 books, at least from the CEOs. I know quite a lot of CEOs uh, in my work at Google and they are so busy running a startup that I really, really doubt that they read a book every single week. I don't think that actually this is so important on how many books you read, but also what's important is what type of books you're reading. And this is the key. Some books, and you cannot compare every book the same way. A book which is, I don't know, maybe 200 pages and 100 pages of index is not the same as reading The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, which is one of the most sophisticated, deep reads that you can have. So simply written, takes you so much time to understand and comprehend. So there are books and there are books. There is books like Atlas Shrugged, uh, which took me about three weeks and someone else I think commented it took them about one year. It's over a thousand pages book, but they are so different. Like some books are novels where you have a storyline, so it kind of pushes you to turn page after page. But some books are philosophy, some books are business, some books are very complicated. So you cannot force yourself to read 52 books or to read uh, exactly the same book amount every week like to have a book every week because the, the books are different unless you just choose a list of books which are all the same size which is pretty much impossible and probably will be a very limited list then other than that I don't see any point for you to 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 do this why it appears that I've read so many books is that I consistently read. I read something every single day. I have a book that I'm reading currently. Every time you ask me that, what are you reading at the moment, I have an answer. I'm not, I'm never not reading anything. When I finish one book, I start another. Sometimes I, book, I read several books in the same time, but I never really stay bookless. I might read some days, I might read 10 pages, 50 pages, some days I might read one page or two pages. 
when do I read? I try to read usually mornings. When I wake up, I would read maybe a few pages, just a little bit to get started on the day, just so that I don't start immediately with social media and answering emails or anything like that. And also I read in the evening so I can prepare myself before sleep to concentrate. So I read a lot in bed as well. And I think it doesn't really matter what times you're reading as long as you keep on reading a little bit every day and you'll be surprised how many books you're going to read so quickly. They say that appetite comes with eating, so it's the same with books. The more you read, the more you feel like reading, the more information you feel like getting. I think the problem with reading actually comes from school. Actually, when I first was at school and we were starting to read some novels in high school, I hated it. I absolutely dreaded it uh, to a terror from my parents who were both very well read. They absolutely <laughs> were pushing all these books on me and I hated these books because I didn't find them relevant for, for my life. I didn't agree with them. I didn't find them interesting. Actually, when I go back to some of these books, I, I reread them after I got some experience in life and now they make sense. But when you're young, it comes a time when a lot of children are pushed uh, to read information which is very inaccessible for them. They're old novels or stories that they don't fully understand. They're less experienced in life. So I think this is where actually a lot of people get the hate towards reading and they just don't want to continue further. Or they just think that it's not something for them. And I think that's a huge loss that school is actually made so people give up from reading, from writing, from math, so from so many things. What's important is when you choose what to read, it's very, very important to read something that's relevant for you. It's very good to have a book list which is based on things that you actually want to acquire as knowledge. Every personal development talk has mentioned it, you must have a plan. You must have a plan and kind of vision of the future, what you want to achieve professionally in your business, personal life. And you have to kind of coordinate this plan that you have with the books that you read. I cannot say that I've always had a consistent plan of what I want to achieve and it's not something that I'm super proud with, but I keep on writing stuff, keep on writing goals. I right now I have my personal development plan which I'm working on. And then of course read books that are inspiring you and that books that kind of don't allow you to let go. I sometimes binge on weekends and in general I'm not a very outgoing person so lockdown was pretty easy for me in London. I was just pretty much secluded in my home reading and doing whatever I, I like. I started drawing as well and to be honest it's not a big effort. I think for someone who is used to going out a lot or being out every weekend or Saturday then it's a bit of a problem but for me it hasn't been. Never delay actually books that are big titles. If you think of big titles I'm gonna read them when I'm old and wise this is never gonna happen. So just go for it, read it and maybe you can reread it the next year and you rediscover it. You you, you get no inf new information, you get new experience, you're kind of a new person every year. You reread and you discover things that you haven't seen at all in your first read of the book. What about audiobooks? Uh, I created actually a video about audiobooks versus normal books. I think that audiobooks are good if you, let's say, use them for biographies or novels, somewhere where you have a storyline. I think they don't make sense for philosophy, for business or anything that's non-fiction. It's just you need to be concentrated. For me at least, when I listen to this kind of books, it's like, well, it goes from one year, it goes from the other year. I'm constantly distracted, especially because I use audio when I'm commuting or walking somewhere, going to the gym. At first the idea sounded great so I can kind of double down on reading but it's actually not really that great because I was not getting anything out of these books. Which brings me again to my first point. It's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of reading, the quality of the books that you're reading and how much you're getting out of them. And then finally track what you read. It just brings you a bit of a sense of accomplishment. I use an app called Goodreads. It's also a website 
it's owned by Amazon. So there you can track really the, the titles, you can track your progress, how many books, how many titles you have read, what have you read over the years. It's actually a good record of you, kind of, of your interest and what you were reading across the time. It also gives you a sense of understanding what's your schedule, what's the optimum reading time for you. So I hope this information is helping you out and it's kind of encouraging more of you to select and designate some time to read more, maybe just half an hour a day, start with 10 minutes a day, one page a day, two sentences a day, but keep it as a habit and don't allow this habit to turn into a chore. The moment it starts turning to a chore, then you will drop probably the habit. So please keep it fun, keep it relevant for you. Uh, if a book is boring, just drop it away. You don't have to finish every single book that you pick up and turn this into a fun journey rather than into a competition. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this type of videos. Let me know in the comments what other habits you have. It will be very interesting to hear from you guys because you seem to be a very well-read group. And I'll be back with a new video next weekend.